Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, and we're in the home stretch of Dave's faves. We're up to number 357, so only about 10 or 11 more to go, and so I'm just wrapping these things up. We're going to bang them out. And today, we are talking about Dvorak's Symphony Number no. 5, Oh, what a glorious symphony this is, and what a surprise it was to discover it, because, you know, I, I didn't come to classical music in the normal way. In other words, you know, learning to play an instrument and being educated that, like, Bach and Beethoven and Brahms are like the gods of music. I mean, I never thought any of those things. I just knew what I liked. And so I listened to things in whatever order they struck me. And I knew Dvorak a long time before I ever heard Brahms, except for the first symphony, which was one of my mother's favorites. and She always played while she was doing housework. So I knew the Brahms first. But the others, I had no clue. And when I did hear them for the first time, they didn't really, you know, they, I thought, oh, gee, Dvorak sounds so much better. It took me a while to get into Brahms. Dvorak, though, from the very start, oh, the tunes, oh, the colorful orchestration. Oh, I loved it. I loved it to death. And I had, well, because, you know, living in a small town in Milford, Connecticut, um, there was a Goodwill Industries, and I've mentioned this before. And Goodwill Industries had all kinds of stuff that people just dumped there. You know, they had books, they had records, they had clothing. The, in the old days, I mean, this was, this was in the mid-60s. So it, it now, of course, it's a much slicker operation and looks more like your sort of average department store. But back then, it was just a big empty room next to the fire station in Milford on New Haven Avenue. And I would bike down there from my, from my neighborhood to the downtown area. And I would go to Goodwill because they had records. And the records cost a nickel. And for some reason, somehow, somebody had dumped a complete superfon. I mean, superfon. How did they get to Milford? I have no clue. Dvorak cycle, including things like the Carol Shana Dvorak Symphony Number no. 5, which is the one we're talking about, and Václav Talich, and you know, these classic, a lot of them were mono, but it didn't matter because my record player was like one of those close and play things, you know, with a 12 pound tone arm. You know, you could play a record once and it would just peel the groove out and you had to throw it away afterwards. So I didn't really care. It cost a nickel. I'd bring a quarter and I'd get five or six records and I got Dvorak symphonies that way. Um, and it was really cool. So I knew the Dvorak symphonies. And when I first heard Brahms' third symphony, I was scratching my head saying, gee, this sounds an awful lot like Dvorak's fifth. It really does. Of course, Dvorak's fifth was not the fifth in those days. It was the third. But that's a whole other story. Um, the, the numbering is all messed up in the early days because people thought Dvorak only wrote five symphonies. And actually, I had all of them even way back then. But in any case... In any case, people thought, I thought, forget people, that Brahms' third sounded an awful lot like Dvorak's fifth and had many structural similarities. Even when I was seven, I was listening for structural similarities. I was an odd kid. And so I really sort of got into that later. And I wound up writing a paper on just that, which was published a couple of years ago, about the influence of Dvorak's fifth on Brahms, because because Brahms was on the committee that was giving Dvorak the Austrian State Prize when he was a budding composer. And Dvorak, in order to get the prize, had to submit his latest works. And so he wrote his first five symphonies before Brahms' first even appeared. Now, Brahms worked on it for 20 years. It was sitting in his back pocket, somewhere like that. But Dvorak's fifth had already been composed, and Brahms knew it. And, and so when he came to write his third, which is also in F major, uh, there were many similarities, and I wrote a whole paper on it. So, I mean, but, but I think that the case is a very, very clear one. Dvorak's Fifth is a screaming masterpiece that nobody knows, that doesn't get played, and it makes me crazy. And I've done a whole talk about it, so I don't want to repeat all of that stuff. But I do have a favorite performance, and my favorite performance of the Fifth is Witold Rowitzki with the London Symphony. It was formerly on Phillips. It's now on Decca. And there are a few, reason, few reasons why. Mostly, first of all, it's a very quick performance. It's just exciting as hell, which I think is wonderful. Second of all, um, it takes the exposition repeat, the first movement, which I really like to hear. It's not, you know, 
life or death, but I really, it's so beautiful. And you do want to hear it again, but the finale, the finale, like Brahms later would do in his third, is in a minor key, which is quite rare in a major key symphony. And, and it's just, it's so intense in this performance. It's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And so I think that's just an incredibly exciting performance, and I love it to death. And it's my favorite Dvorak Fifth, plain and simple. If you don't know Dvorak's Fifth Symphony, you need to hear it, and you need to sit down and hear it because it has such a wonderfully sophisticated handling of form. The two inner movements are connected. The, the themes in the finale are actually based on the themes of the slow movement, which is also true of Brahms third in similar ways. Oh, it's just so cool, you know, the similarities, but the way Dvorak handles cyclic form and, and the way the whole piece comes together at the end with the return of the main theme from the very opening, a la, you know, later Bruckner did that sort of stuff. But Dvorak was before any of them. Really, really cool. I mean, just a brilliant romantic slash symphony in the classical symphonic tradition. Just the kind of thing that Brahms would have taken a look at and gone, ooh, now here's a man after my own heart. And so it proved as they became great friends. And this is a symphony that should be one of your great friends. So keep on listening and thanks for joining me. Dvorak's Fifth, it's the real deal, folks. Take care.